Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Destrudy. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a different program or department, different services to your attention to learn a little bit more about the important roles and responsibilities of county government. And today, we have a newer face. I don't know, Linda, have you done a TV program with us before? Not with you. Not with me? Not well, with this you. is Linda Leader. What a great last name that is, <laughs> who works with our UW Extension office. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. Linda just became a co-department with Jane Jensen, who has been with our Extension office for 25, 30 plus years. A probably. long time. You wouldn't know it looking at her. No. But a very knowledgeable and pleasurable individual to work with her. Their co-department heads now, every department has a leader that mm -hmm. I look to, and it naturally, with your last Obvious. name, you had to be selected. Yep. Well, it's good to have you with us today, and we're going to learn more and more, more about the roles and responsibilities of Extension, but let's start with just a little bit about yourself. We were talking off the air here a little bit. You're from Sheboygan County. Why don't correct, you just give correct. a little snapshot about your background and when you got involved with Extension? I grew up in Sheboygan County in the township of Scott. Um, with my parents and they still live out that way. So it's very, very nice. I know the extension program because I was in the 4-H program growing up, kindergarten all the way through high school. I interned with Tim Talon uh, as a 4-H intern one summer. And I've been working with the Wisconsin 4-H Youth Development Program within UW Extension for the past eight years over a couple different counties. And you said you graduated from Random Lake. I High did. School. I so did. So Jane Jensen knew my grandmother. My my grandmother who passed away about four years ago. She was known as the Egg Lady. Her <laughs> name is or was Bernice Toggy, and she was one of the first 4-H leaders in the county, or at least years really? ago, was very very involved. Does that name ring a bell to you or not? The furthest back, I um, Toggy. It's okay if you no, don't know. That's all not right. so much. She was in the Sheboygan Falls area. But okay. I know okay. Jane knew her through the years. So, well, pretty cool mm -hmm. dealing with this, you know, being involved with 4 H when you were a kid, junior high, high school, and then you decided at some point to make a career of it. Correct. It's, yeah. it's been fun. So, how long have you been with uh, UW Extension Sheboygan? Two years Two now. years now. Two years. And give us a little overview. What's all involved with UW Extension? We may have some viewers or or saying, I've heard of UW what Extension, but what do they all do? Well, I like to say that we are a small but mighty office. There are six educators and three support staff, and we do 4-H youth development, family living, agriculture, community resource development, and we also have a food and nutrition educator that works under our family living program. So we reach the people of Wisconsin wherever they live and work, however we can. Well, and what is the mission of UW Extension? Um, University of Wisconsin provides statewide access to university resources and research to the people of Wisconsin to learn, grow, and succeed um, at all stages of life. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know that we co-located here a number of years ago, but some people might be wondering, well, what's the difference between UW Sheboygan and UW Extension. What, what is the difference? There is a tie, a small tie together, but we are actually very different. We are a branch of the UW system, hence UW Extension, um, and by being part of the UW system, we have access to the specialists, the uh, professors, the research, the resources, but we're different because we go out into the community. We work with people of all ages and stages in their life. Uh, it ranges from within farming communities to urban areas. So we're just reaching out to people where are they, wherever they are. So in addition to Jane Jensen, who has been with us again for years, mm -hmm. Mike Balweg, who yes. works in the agriculture sector, right? And he's been with us for, for years. He's over 25 years now. Now he's the crop specialist, or what's crops his title? Crops and soils. Crops and soils, okay. Crops and, soil. and then there was an individual, your predecessor years ago, who Roger and I are both fond of, Dave Such, who was yes. the department head for many years and mm -hmm. retired a few years ago. And he worked more with planning, zoning, things that now Kevin Strzok's doing, right? Correct, yeah. correct. Community resource development. So I recall, and I know Roger can recall, this was one of our more controversial consolidations. I mean, we have consolidated now, I don't mm -hmm. know how many different departments, programs, whether they've been consolidated or co-located. And when the proposal came forward, 
to consolidate UW Extension with UW Sheboygan, I think for many of us, including the staff, you know, folks could see why it made sense. The synergy all being under the mm -hmm. UW system, the savings associated, the ability to leverage resources associated. Correct. But with that said, it was a big change. It's scary. It's scary. And we had a nice facility in Sheboygan Falls that yes. people were used to going to for years, including my I, grandmother. I remember where that is. <laughs> and I know for some people, particularly I think in the agriculture community, mm -hmm. it was tough to swallow. But now some years have passed. Yes. What's your read? What's the what kind of feedback do you get from the community? Um, being that I grew up in the other office and now I'm working in this office, I do like being on the UW Sheboygan campus. We have larger office space, more meeting rooms, um, excellent facilities to work within. Um, now with the brand new engineering building, hopefully we can get youth in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics project areas involved with the engineering and getting them interested. It gives you the whole campus really at True. your disposal, True. whether it's the theater or as you said, what yes. have you. It's, it's yours as much as the UW Sheboygans, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. How about your customers though? I, I personally have heard from some agriculture producers who have come to me and said, you know what, Adam, I was not happy when the county board voted to make that change. Mm -hmm. But now that it's happened, it's not so bad. You know, I've, I've heard some, <laughs> I'm some of I'm glad that they could say it's not so it's bad. It's not so bad, <laughs> right, right. How about yourself? What do you hear from people? Um, actually, I think it's been so many years that the volunteers have just really adjusted naturally to it. And once in a great while, we'll hear, oh, well, back at the other office. It's kind of old news now. But it's not even mentioned. Now, 4-H is obviously your key area of yes. focus, yes. and I hear so many positive things about our 4-H okay. programs here. All the people involved, all the volunteers involved. Tell us a little bit about 4-H, the programming, and just how significant it is to Sheboygan County. Okay. I share the leadership of the 4-H program with Sarah Tarjason. She's our 4-H Youth Development Program educator, and I'm the 4-H Youth Development Program coordinator. Um, we're working on registrations right now, so it's just an estimate, but there's about 950 to 1,000 youth enrolled in our traditional 4-H community club program. That is those that enroll in a 4-H club, take the 4-H projects, exhibit at the fair, that kind of process. We have probably close to 430 adult volunteers for our program that work with those youth. Um, and those volunteers, they have to go through a new leader orientation. They have a background check done every four years. They register every year agreeing to code of conducts and expectations and understanding of their work with the youth in the 4-H program. So it's one to three, one to four ratio of youth to adults. Wow. Very caring environment that we provide. Then we do outside outside of the traditional 4-H program, going to do after-school programs, um, doing uh, food chef programs. And we, we try to reach out to youth in different ways, getting them excited about whatever, whatever life skills it is that they would like to learn. So nearly 1,000 youngsters Very close. are involved in 4-H. Yes. And about 430 adult, adult volunteers, volunteers helping leading groups or working with Yes. young people on the different types of programming that's provided. Mm -hmm. And touch on that a little bit. I mean, Roger and I'll get to the fair and we, we see all these proud 4-H'ers with their chickens and their goats and whatever it may mm -hmm. be, but it's more than just agriculture. It is, it is. Um, our number one project that the youth take is photography. I'll be darned. And that's not just within Sheboygan County, but across the state. Um, it is, it has just been a booming project that everyone is involved with. Our second largest is horses, the horse and pony project. And the youth, even if they don't have a horse, they can be in the horseless horse project. So they can work with somebody else's horse. Archery has become huge in Sheboygan County. We have an amazing leader and the youth look up to him. And actually he's been able to generate more volunteers to help him out with the growing number that we have in that. Food and nutrition has become in the top five and also arts and crafts. I'll be darned. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you a lot of people didn't know that. Yes. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Well, thank you. Nice overview. I'll turn it over to Roger.
good to have you with us today, Linda. And I was curious that you mentioned about photography being a big issue because uh, when I was growing up, a good friend of mine, uh, his interest uh, and it got to be his passion was photography and he developed that mm -hmm. in 4-H, ended up getting a scholarship and he got to be very excellent in his field because he ended up working for National Geographic's that and that's amazing. pretty well the t top notch of uh, the mm -hmm. uh, the photography industry if you get that. So he went on archaeological digs and well traveled because of something that started when he was interested in it in 4-H. So I just thought I'd mention that. I like that, that story. I might yep. have to come back to you for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we can give you some details if you need to sometime. But, uh, but there are a lot of other things going on and I think a lot of people think of 4-H more as a rural community thing also, but they're, they're the majority of them come from the cities and the villages of, mm -hmm. of our township. Would you give a little overview of some of the other programs and the different courses that are offered to people if, if they're interested? Within 4-H or UW yes. Extension? Uh, uh, <laughs> both, please. Yep. A little bit of a both and. Sure. Um, as as we work with people throughout the county, we do have, as we said, with agriculture where we reach out to the farms and that's with Mike Baldwin doing crops and soil science mm -hmm. and water testing. And, um, and then also with the 4-H and the, the youth development that we have there. Jane Jensen, Jane Jensen works with our family living program and she works with the strengthening families where she works with um, parents of young kids and parents of teenagers and parents who then take care of their parents. So it's, she really works across the lifespan of, of a family, um, really. And she does a lot within, the commu she collaborates a lot with the community. And that's where a lot of our urban work is. Um, Kevin Strzok, he is going out to all the townships working on land zoning and uh, really getting into each of the nitty gritty of how to get each of the communities pulled together. And uh, getting back to the point of agricultural, they, there's a big industry in our county that relies on uh, the agricultural business. Uh, would you give us a little feel for how much uh, is devoted to that and what, how mm -hmm. that affects our Sheboygan County economy? I would love to. Um, as I was talking with Mike about this, I really, it was eye-opening for me. Um, I learned that there are 8,662 jobs for the residents of just Sheboygan County that are related to agriculture. And with that, it's contributing to $739 million to the county income. Um, and along with that, 101 farms generate $643,000 to the local economy for, for local food. So it's very exciting how much agriculture is based within Sheboygan County. And with those jobs I mentioned before, that could be from, fight, from the farmers to hired hands to veterinarians, um, implement dealers, factories such as Sargento or Johnson, like really getting into the food industry. Um, there are so many different local food restaurants where they're working with, so it's, it's good how involved we are. And our county has local zoning, not county-wide zoning. Mm -hmm. And uh, your department helps with that quite a bit with, uh, with community growth management or to most people's zoning, what part fits in what uh, area. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a variety of towns, villages, and cities they're unique, but how does your uh, department help the people help themselves? Kevin Strzok has um, really been making, making a focus on working with the townships of this, and it's something called the Wisconsin Farmland Preservation Program, and it's designed to help the local towns and landowners as they preserve their agriculture land, minimize conflicti conflicting land uses, and promoting soil and water conservation. Um, and through that, he's able to help towns in the Sheboygan County area obtain local farmland owners and update their zoning ordinances to meet the often very complex requirements of state statutes. And uh, uh, the UW also assists uh, people that want their 
they're private, well tested, and mm -hmm. their water. A lot of us uh, that people in the communities that live in the cities and villages have have public water, but how is that available, and how can they access that that resource? Through since 2011, Kevin has been working with towns and. Officially, he's gone to eight different towns and worked with the residents to have their well water tested for bacteria, nitrate, pesticides, arsenic, lead, copper, zinc, all those many different chemicals. And um, recently, he went to the towns of Herman and Mosul, and they tested 108 different wells. So they go there, they take the water bottles, they get those samples, and Kevin will then partner up with the Water and Environmental Analysis Lab at UW Sheboygan, or UW Stevens Point. Um, and he runs all those tests. And most of them have come back positive, which is negative, which is positive. <laughs> and just if I can jump sure. in on this one, Roger, because I know recently the Sheboygan Press had a series of articles about you know mm -hmm. water quality and mm -hmm. and nitrates and pesticides and things that you know can contaminate our well water and if you haven't had your water tested you know particularly the rural areas because as Roger said in the cities that's that's done for you as part mm -hmm. of municipal water but if you haven't had your well tested it's really a good thing to do yes. and if you're not sure what to do either contact our extension office and ask for Kevin Strzok, although yes. any of the staff can refer you to him, or contact our county planning and conservation department because they assist with this as well. Mm -hmm. As Linda said, we go out and work with usually a town at a time and encourage residents to come together and do it all in one shot. But if you're not from that particular town, it's still a good idea yes. to have your water <laughs> tested and there are private opportunities to do so, but we can help you get, get in the right hands and make sure it gets done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. And uh, the UW Extension has been with Wisconsin for over 100 years, and there's uh, serving a broad variety of audience and people, but one that everyone can, uh, can take access and take advantage of is the uh, Family Living and Nutrition Program. Would you explain that to us? Yes. Um, Jane Jensen, she, is, she uses university research and also collaborates with agencies and organizations around the county to provide education and leadership to strengthen individuals and their families. Um, uh, um, the most recent program she's really been working on, and I've been hearing a lot of good things about, is the Strengthening, Strengthening Families Program 10 to 14. And that program is an evidence-based family skill building program facilitated over seven weeks and by trained facilitators. And it is for youth aged 10 to 14 and their families and they learn together in a structured environment. And there's been research that shows that for every dollar invested in this program, $9.60 is saved in future costs related to um, involvement with the juvenile justice system, drug testing and lost future earnings. So there's a very nice tie together with the whole. Great, thank you Linda for being with us and mm -hmm. uh, for all the good things that you do, you and your staff do for all of the citizens of Sheboygan County. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I imagine some of our viewers are probably saying, for goodness sake, this <laughs> department does it all. <laughs> we do. Conservation, <laughs> agriculture, water testing, working with uh, people in need from a standpoint of nutrition, working with our kids and all the programming. I mean, as you said, it's a rather small department, but a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to return for a moment to uh, what you said earlier, almost a thousand kids and just 4-H alone and 430 volunteers are thereabouts. And they're volunteers. Yes. I mean, if, if they were being paid a minimum wage or better, uh, it's a substantial savings and mm -hmm. a substantial contribution to improve our community, is it not? It is, it is. I've started doing a little bit of research on return on investments with volunteers. And the, I believe the average volunteer is worth $22 an hour, they say, right around there. And if the average volunteer for the 4-H program is 65 hours across the entire year, that is huge. But talking with our general leaders recently, I asked them about how much time do they give in a month? And the general leaders are those responsible and in charge of our 33 clubs that we have across the county. 
they put in around 40 hours a month. Wow. Just for 4-H. Wow. So what the community is saving with the volunteers giving their time, expertise, skills, knowledge, just that positive, caring relationship that helps youth foster and grow to be productive citizens is just tenfold back. It's one of the things I sure love about Sheboygan County. I raised my family here. My kids have all now graduated from Plymouth High School, but we raised them here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just such a good, caring community, and you have so many people willing to give their time and talent to help others. And obviously, you're working right in that area. Mm -hmm. I I just, a shout out to all of our volunteers, whether it's UW Extension, or frankly, any of the not-for-profits or other areas. Uh, here we're entering the holiday season and you just know there's going to be a lot of people donating food to food banks and mm-hmm. helping people in need over the holidays and it's just a wonderful community. It is, it is. Speaking of wonderful people, uh, <laughs> one of the programs you didn't really touch on but I really think is neat from a standpoint of making our community even more beautiful are the Master Gardeners. Yes. <laughs> Not only here at UW Sheboygan, but they did some work around the administration building, the courthouse, and I think they also work with the city, don't they, a little bit on Main Street? And I think they do. I think they do. I believe there's a, um, over 100 volunteers in the Sheboygan County Master Gardener program. They they get the title of Master Gardener because they go through extensive training. They have multiple courses that they go through. They have to give, I believe, 24 hours of volunteer service a year. They come, they sit on campus actually, and they will work with people as they come in with their plants and soil and bugs and say, what's going on? Can you help me out? Hmm. And trust me, I've even done it. They answer questions (laughs) Um, and they help beautify the area. As you mentioned on campus, I love walking around here because I really do see, see some great landscape. And of done. course you have bookworm gardens now right across the street and uh, Chairman Destrudy and the county board granted that property. They gave it to bookworm gardens mm-hmm. to lease for a buck for like a hundred years or something like that. And, and we did that not only because we knew it was just a wonderful vision that they had and mm-hmm. what another opportunity to improve our community, but you get a lot of kids now coming yes. up here, not only for UW Extension, but they they see what UW Sheboygan's all about, and it's not such a scary place after all. No, it's actually a very beautiful and nice area to be at. So of all these programs you've talked about, you know, let's try to wrap this up a little bit. Some folks might be watching this and thinking, well, how do we afford all this? It helps to have a lot of volunteer base, it does. but the state predominantly funds UW Extension. It's really a county, state, federal government partnership, predominantly the state of Wisconsin and Sheboygan County. And so priorities have to be established. We can't be all things to all people. And recently, if folks have been following (laughs) state level, uh, there were some cuts to not only the UW system, but UW Extension. Correct. What kind of cuts have we absorbed locally and how do we go about establishing priorities where we're going to apply our our limited resources? Mm-hmm. Um, we Every year we don't just pick something out of the thin air because we ha- ourselves have interest in it, but we do needs-based assessments to see what is a priority that we should focus on. Um, and by doing that, the educators, we are able to work on plans of work and really come up with a comprehensive way of reaching out to the people and helping them through whichever necessary thing it is at the time. And then utilizing the research and resources from the state. And the state did reduce funding for extension countywide, statewide yes. by what? A certain, wasn't it? $3.5 million. Okay. Um, and that is not starting until 2017. All right. So, so we're not feeling it yet. We're, we're not feeling it. it yet. And at this point in time, we don't have the most to say about what's going to happen. There's been a lot of assessments done, um, surveying done to see what it will be best for us as educators, but also for the community and the people that we work with. And we are going to continue to have a strong local presence, but it just might look different. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we won't be 
shaking it up too much. In essence, of the 4-H program will still be the 4-H program. It's just who and how and where. Maybe sharing staff and potentially collaborating more with other counties. I know UW Sheboygan, for example, it's one of 13 two-year campuses, mm -hmm. and they've just gone from 13 deans to four. Right. You know, they're sharing more of their administration staff to, mm -hmm. again, to respond to budget cuts. So yeah. uh, we'll have to respond as well. That's that's part of the, the type of work we're in. But again, back to establishing priorities in the programs you provide. Mm -hmm. You do have a, a county board liaison committee that yes. oversees your operations, and that's an opportunity to get input from the public, and mm -hmm. decisions are made there as well, are they not? Correct. Correct. We share with them, they share with us. It's a very open door policy of communication that we have. Well, we only got a minute or two left. You've covered a lot of ground. Anything else that you wanted to touch on or anything new that you're working on uh, over the course of the winter and the year ahead that you'd like to share? Right now, I'm actually working on training those new volunteers in. Um, this morning, I had a training, and I had five volunteers. And this afternoon, evening, I'll have a training with close to 20 more volunteers. Um, so they are getting ready and excited for the for each year and giving their time. And speaking of giving time, I want to thank you personally because uh, I had the opportunity, I think, for the second consecutive year with my daughter to volunteer at the 4-H food stand mm -hmm. at the county fair. And, you know, you, you get that call and you're, are you going to take an hour or two and do so? And I found it so rewarding. I mean, the yes. kids are great. You've got some 4-H leaders there. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then you get to see all these happy faces come up as they're <laughs> pouring those shakes, shakes. and uh, all the good food that they provide. But the kids are so impressive. I mean, mm -hmm. as young as 8, 10, 12 years old, and they just do a fantastic job. They're working the front line, taking the money, counting change, handing it back. Great experience. Exactly. And you're probably wondering, where does that money go, right? Yeah, where does it go? <laughs> it doesn't come to me. Um, that money helps provide... Uh, we have a summer camp that we hold that's five days and four nights that we offer at a very, very, very reasonable price for the youth to attend because of the 4-H Food Stamp fundraiser. We have scholarships for youth that are continuing on to college or scholarships for youth that would like to gain more leadership skills at different, at different places. We have educational trips that the youth are able to take going out east or down to Atlanta, Georgia or to Washington, D.C. And then we also are continuing on with that 4-H project development, always keeping it up to date. And so the going best right things. back into the very kids mm -hmm. that are helping her. Now. Yes, and leadership development. We always want to make sure the leaders know what's going on. Linda, you've got a fantastic last name. Linda yes. Leader, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for your good work at UW Extension. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, suggestions for improvement, don't hesitate to contact Linda or one of her co-workers or your county board supervisor. Next month, Greg Schnell is going to be our highway, or used to be highway commissioner, now it's transportation director, and he'll be here to talk about road improvements that have happened and what's planned ahead. Until then, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, a Merry Christmas, and thanks for joining us.